This video introduces the concept of sensitivity analysis and summarizes a handful of sensitivity analysis methods that Dakota provides. Sensitivity analysis is a category of Dakota method that reveals the extent to which output responses from a simulation model depend on each input variable to that simulation model. Sensitivity analysis is typically one of the first parametric analyses conducted on a new simulation model with Dakota, as it can greatly assist with identifying key model characteristics and developing an intuition about the model's behavior. You would primarily use sensitivity analysis to rank the most important variables, and then subsequently downselect on those variables for follow-on analyses, such as calibration, uncertainty quantification, or surrogate model construction. Sensitivity analysis can also help you to prioritize your resources when it comes to studying the simulation model. For example, sensitivity analysis can inform you where you should conduct physical experiments, what physics or engineering refinements are needed to be predictive, how a simulation should be improved to be useful, and which inputs are important to accurately estimate output uncertainty. There are two types of sensitivity analysis in Dakota, local sensitivity analysis and global sensitivity analysis. Local sensitivity measures the relative influence of variables at a particular point in the input domain using partial derivatives. Global sensitivity analysis, on the other hand, assesses the influence of the parameters over the entire input space. These methods can help you learn things such as which variables contribute most to response variability, what is the general trend of the response function over all values of inputs, does the response depend more nonlinearly on one factor than another, the Dakota methods for global sensitivity analysis typically rely on a well-spaced set of model response evaluations over the input parameter space, as shown in these images. Of Dakota's many methods that generate well-spaced samples, Latin hypercube sampling is the most commonly used, but we will briefly survey some of the other sensitivity analysis methods at your disposal at the end of this video. For this tutorial, we will use a simple cantilever beam from the Dakota training materials as our simulation model to Dakota. A cantilever beam is a type of beam anchored at one end to a support, such as a wall. There are seven input variables for our cantilever beam model. The length of the beam, L, the width of the beam, W, the thickness of the beam, T, the density of the beam, Rho, Young's modulus, E, the horizontal load on the beam, X, and the vertical load on the beam, Y. And there are three output responses for our cantilever beam model. The mass of the beam, the stress on the beam, and displacement on the beam, for this problem, our goal will be to assess which of the input parameters most strongly influence each of the output responses. One could do this by directly analyzing the physics model equations of a cantilever beam, which are simple and algebraic. However, in most cases, an analyst will only be able to treat their simulation model as a black box, without direct access to the underlying equations, so we will demonstrate Dakota sensitivity analysis strictly by interrogating the model at various parameter values, and then analyzing the variation in the output responses. The files used in this example can be found at this path in the Dakota install directory. Let's add these files to a new project in the Dakota GUI, and then modify the Dakota input file to make it suitable for a sensitivity analysis study. Classically, Global sensitivity analysis uses a hypercube input domain, with uniform distributions on the variables. In Dakota, this naturally leads to using continuous design or uniform uncertain variables. If you have more accurate or appropriate probability distribution information about your variables, you can choose from Dakota's other uncertain variable types, such as normal or Weibull. Let's specify uniform uncertain variables instead of the default continuous design variables provided in this example. Position your cursor after the variables keyword, then use the Dakota Text Editor's completion proposal tool by holding Control and Space, or Command and Space on Mac. Select Uniform Uncertain from the list and specify a variable count of 7. Then delete the original line specifying continuous design. Note that our variables block has specified the 7 input variables to the cantilever beam that we discussed earlier. We will also specify lower and upper bounds for our uniform uncertain variables using the keywords lower underscore bounds and upper underscore bounds. For keywords such as these, Dakota stores numerical values in space-separated lists. The indices of these lists need to correspond to the indices of your variable descriptors. For instance, the first occurrence of 0.5 after lower underscore bounds 
corresponds to the lower bound of the variable w, which is in the first index of the descriptors list. The second occurrence of 0.5 corresponds to the lower bound of the variable t, which is the second variable in the descriptor list, and so on. Let's fill out lower and upper bound values for all of our uniform uncertain variables. As the number of variables in your study grows, manually editing these lists can become tiresome and error-prone. Fortunately, the Dakota GUI provides special dialogues for editing variables, which we will cover in future tutorials. In the Responses block, we have specified three response functions, mass, stress, and displacement. We should also mention the interface block for this Dakota study. Rather than using the direct keyword to specify an internal Dakota driver, this interface uses the keyword fork to tell Dakota to call an external simulation model. If you'd like to learn more about configuring Dakota to communicate with external simulation models, that topic is covered in other tutorial videos. All that remains now is for us to choose a method. Depending on your simulation model, there are a few options you have at your disposal, which we'll cover in future tutorial videos. If only a single study is feasible, we recommend using Global Latin Hypercube Sampling, or LHS, and examining the generated scatter plots and correlation coefficients. Sampling advantageously provides a global design of experiments, joined over all of the parameters, but consequently it can be challenging to strictly tease out the effect of individual parameters. One may also post-process the LHS samples for free using regression-based polynomial chaos expansion to calculate and visualize SOBOL indices, which apportion response variance to each input parameter. Centered parameter studies yield univariate effects of each variable, so are not confounded by variable interactions. This method can be applied as a precursor to sampling if budget permits, or an alternative if you are budget constrained and univariate suffices. Finally, multidimensional parameter studies are only practical for small numbers of variables and levels, but offer more power in computing main effects and interactions.